As RuneScape gets older, a lot of its content gets forgotten. Development time shifts to newer updates, and the team doesn't have enough time to fix everything. Sometimes something is so broken, it literally just gets turned into a feature for the sake of time. In today's video, we're gonna dive back into the world of RuneScape's broken content. Now listen, I've made a video like this in the past and got dozens of comments telling me that I should stop complaining, I don't know what I'm talking about, and that I belong in hell right next to Mod Jed. Me making this video is in no way meant to be me complaining or saying any of these need to be fixed. RuneScape is weird. You can defeat one of the game's hardest bosses using candy in a poison stick and I love it. So with all that out of the way, let's begin. This gate is broken. <laughs> so funny. Okay, let's try it for real this time. Jars are rare drops from bosses that you can display in your player-owned house. Other than that, they don't really do much. But when jars were first added to the game, they used to do absolutely nothing. The team had plans to make the previously discussed boss layer in your POH, but nothing had actually been developed yet. Jars were also meant to be untradeable, but whoever coded Kraken's jar of dirt accidentally made it tradable and didn't realize it until the update went live. Rather than fix it then and there, the team went, it's a feature, and every future jar was also made tradable. So the big construction rework update rolls out two years later, and the ability to add jars to your house to display boss monsters is added, but they're still tradable. As a result, whenever someone receives a jar as a drop, it's usually nothing but disappointment for multiple reasons. First, pets are usually around the same drop rate as jars. And second, because jars were left tradable, they're worth almost nothing. But for a boss like Vorkath, which has been farmed non-stop for years, its jar is at around 12,000 coins. There's one jar that's actually more broken than all of them, so much so that I think it deserves its own section. But there's something I want to talk about before that. Are you tired of cheap gas station earbuds that always seem to break? Well, I have a solution. I mean, why else would I bring up earbuds if I didn't? Today's video is sponsored by Raycon. About two months ago, Raycon sent me their earbuds, and I was skeptical at first, but these things are honestly really nice. They're wireless, last for six hours, have seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a compact yet comfortable noise isolating design. Not to mention they're for everyone because they start at half the price of other premium audio brands. You can customize your pair with tons of fun colors, patterns, and a variety of fit options. Speaking of fit, these things don't fall out. I've taken them running and to the gym multiple times and never had an issue. A lot of other earbuds seem to fall out faster than a hardcore Iron Man losing status. Did you know that Raycon was actually co-founded by Ray J, and celebrities like Snoop Dogg, Mike Tyson, and Rich the Kid are obsessed with Raycons. If you're still not sold, Raycon even offers a 45-day free return policy. Even better, you can click the link I have in the description below to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. Where will you be taking your Raycons this summer? Skatizo's Jar of Darkness. This jar is quite literally one of the rarest items in the game, with an estimated 4,000 plus hours of grinding required to receive one. But why? It's about the same as most other jars with a drop rate of 1 in 2500. Well the issue is, to fight Skatizo, you need a Dark Totem, an item that you have to create using three parts dropped from monsters in the Catacombs of Karend. Gathering a full totem can sometimes be an extremely long process. You can spend all day in the Catacombs, and if you're unlucky, you won't get all the pieces for a full totem. Anyway, the jar is so rare that when it first launched, they were selling for over 200 million GP. 200 mil for an item that at the time did absolutely nothing. The construction update wasn't even out yet. When asked about the jar, Mod Arcane said that the drop rate was likely an oversight by the team and that rather than have the team fix it as an integrity change, it should be pulled. It was later pulled to be changed from 1 in 2500 to 1 in 500, but it failed by 3%. I honestly don't even really know why it failed. Even at 1 in 500, that's still potentially hundreds of hours of grinding just for a jar that's been up someone's ass. I'm not even kidding. The examine text is literally, it smells like it's been where the sun doesn't shine. Anyway, moving on. You ever get a slayer task of, let's say, 47 rats and think to yourself, man, I wish I could be killing rats with my bud. Well, you used to be able to. Partner Slayer was originally introduced in May of 2015, but getting it to work was kind of a headache. So let's say you want to partner up with a friend. Neither of you can have a current slayer task to be partners. So if you do have one, you have to go finish it or skip it. It's a bit annoying, but I guess it makes sense. But then let's say you're 60 Slayer and your friend is 80 Slayer. Your friend partners up with you, gets a task, and boom, it's Gargoyles, a level 75 Slayer monster. 
your friend now has a gargoyles task and you have nothing because you can't fight gargoyles. So now your friend has to go kill 146 gargoyles while you wait and hope that the next task they get is something you can do too. Again, I understand why it had to be that way, but it's still annoying. My favorite part of Partner Slayer's history has to be why it was removed. Something I haven't explained is how you became partners with someone. You'd open the Partner Slayer interface by right clicking and selecting the menu option on an enchanted gem, slayer ring, or slayer helmet. You press new partner, type in your partner's name, they hopefully accept it, and yay, your partners. Now, here's the thing. You can send a partner request to almost anyone. As long as you're friends with them or they have messaging open to anyone and their accept aid is on, you can send a request to them anytime, anywhere, as much as you would like. It would open an interface on their screen and stop their character from doing whatever they were doing. Once people started to realize the power they had, it was mayhem. Players would purposely send non-stop partner slayer requests while their friends were doing things like the Inferno or PKing. A lot of them didn't realize that in order to block it, they would have to turn off accept aid. Not to mention, on top of this, some players would make alternate accounts and level them carefully and block specific Slayer monsters so they would only get the tasks they wanted. For example, they were able to force a Slayer Master to only assign two tasks, Kurasks and Smoke Devils. Kurasks are great money making and Smoke Devils are extremely fast XP. Other niche groups even use Partner Slayer to do things like get 99 Slayer on 10 HP accounts. The amount of random account builds this community makes never ceases to amaze me. Now, because so few people actually use Partner Slayer and and those that did use it, used it incorrectly, it was ultimately scrapped in June of 2020. However, the option to team up with a Slayer partner still exists, but when you try it, it says it's temporarily unavailable. To be honest, I won't be surprised if it's unavailable forever. This next feature is probably the most nostalgic one on this list. I'd like you to try and remember, how did you play RuneScape, let's say, 10 years ago? I'd bet over 95% of you answered a web browser, unless you misunderstood the question, which is also okay. These days, most RuneScape players use desktop clients or their mobile counterparts. I can't name a single person I know who plays using the web browser, mainly because the client is broken in most modern day browsers. As time goes on, more and more browsers are ending support for Java applets due to security concerns. Sadly, the RuneScape web client is collateral. If you attempt to play through the website, it'll likely prompt you to download the RuneScape client. Some players have discovered that using outdated browsers, you're able to get the web client to work. For example, this guy using Firefox on Windows 2000. But the average player isn't going to do that, and Jagex is no reason to go to war with web browsers over this. So sadly, browser by browser, the RuneScape web client is disappearing. Luckily, one thing that won't ever disappear is the chance to press the like button on this video. It helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm, so I'd appreciate it if you gave it a gentle tap. Anyway, moving on. Typically, whenever you complete a quest on RuneScape, that story is closed forever. There's no way to ever play through a quest again without creating a new account. But just like that weird uncle you thought you'd never see again, one of RuneScape's quest characters refuses to be forgotten. In Desert Treasure, a quest almost exclusively not in the desert, you need to collect four diamonds. If you're holding one or more of those diamonds in your inventory, there's a chance a stranger will spawn in a attack you, his reasoning being that you're not worthy to carry those diamonds. The stranger's motives are never explained because a mod that helped create Desert Treasure says they just never got around to it. So if this mysterious stranger isn't creepy enough, it turns out he can still show up years after you complete the quest. Players who have already completed Desert Treasure have reported that the stranger will sometimes reappear and just follow them around. In actuality, the stranger spawned there for someone else who was doing the quest, but for some reason there's a bug that causes him to lose focus and just grapple on to some nearby player. Mod Ash, one of the game's developers, says that they know how to fix it, but have chose not to because of how funny it is. And you know what? I gotta agree. The Gout Tuber, to some players, is one of RuneScape's most hated items. You need one in order to complete the Karamja Medium Diary, but there's really only two ways to get it. First, pay anywhere from half a million to a million GP for it on the Grand Exchange, or tear down the jungle in Taibuanai Village. Chopping these bushes gives you a chance at an event. The event could be useful, like a gem rock or Gout Tuber. Well, sometimes it's an angry tribesman or poisonous spider. Each event only has a 1% chance of being a Gout Tuber, so you figure you'd want the best machine Shetty and highest woodcutting level possible, right? That way you clear jungle as fast as you can. Actually, the wiki team discovered the Gout Tuber event relies on your woodcutting level and not how much jungle you successfully cut. So without all the confusing math, you have a better chance to receive a Gout Tuber at level 30 woodcutting using the worst machete 
then at level 99 woodcutting with the best machete, you basically want to spend as much time as possible chopping the same bush. Confusing stuff, but it does prove that RuneScape's code is made of spaghetti. If you want the full write-up on this, it'll be linked below. Lastly, I mentioned at the beginning that I've talked about RuneScape's broken content before. If you want to see that video, it's linked on screen right now, and some of the glitches I talk about there honestly might be even crazier than the ones you've already seen today.